Corey, good, good. All right, so um, course announcements for this week. All right, um, make sure if you uh, hadn't gotten it in uh, by you know uh, five minutes ago that you get your uh, forum post uh, slash uh, CPA uh, number four in uh, ASAP uh, so that you can get uh, as many good quality points uh, as possible. What I did with that, uh, and, and I'll do that a few more times throughout the semester, is, is I'll combine uh, assignments uh, so that you guys can knock out two things uh, with, uh, with one activity. Um, and so what I wanna do here uh, in a little bit is I wanna hear your thoughts on uh, on your forum post, I read through uh, you know a few of them uh, last night this morning, um, and the thoughts are really interesting. I'm 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 intrigued to see what you guys think about um, those types of things. We're, we're making modern connections uh, with the Greek gods, uh, those types of uh, of things. I want to hear hopefully uh, some comments, uh, some things thrown into the chat uh, on that. This week, all right, uh, we're doing uh, more modern connections, okay? Um, but we're gonna do it uh, in a little bit, uh, I wanna say a different way, but we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna move on to some different type of material this week, all right? Um, so this week we're gonna focus on uh, the growth of the uh, Greek city-state, uh, how it became powerful, uh, the height of uh, kind of classical Greek civilization, uh, what happened, uh, certain types of things we want to look at. Uh, and our major focus this week, guys, uh, that we're going to get into um, is th this is, I, I like to call this Spartan Week, all right? Um, uh, not Michigan State Spartan Week, all right? Uh, I'm not, uh, uh, we're not going to, you know, look up, uh, you know, Michigan State uh, highlights and see Magic Johnson and uh, uh, who else went to Michigan State? Oh, Kirk Cousins, a terrible quarterback he is. Um, he went to Michigan State. Uh, but we're gonna look at the Spartans, the city-state of Sparta. So in your book, um, I, I believe it starts, uh, guys, on page 192, okay? Uh, so in your text, uh, beginning on page 192, they start to do a focus, they start to do kind of um, a look at Athens versus Sparta, and they give you what look like confusing charts about their governments. Don't worry about those. Don't focus so much on those as much as what we want to look at with the Spartans and how we want to approach the Spartans this week. Okay. Um, and I'll share my screen a little bit. We'll talk a little bit about PowerPoint. I'll post another uh, narrated uh, note PowerPoint this week on uh, Sparta and the Spartans. We'll watch a video, a couple videos uh, on the Spartans. And uh, we'll really get some modern connections going. We'll get your thoughts on uh, Sparta. We'll get your uh, opinions, your reactions. Some of you are going to, Sparta uh, tends to, when we look at Sparta and we have Spartan Week, it tends to divide um, the class uh, into uh, sections. Some people really like the Spartans. Some of you are going to look at the Spartans and you're going to be like, yeah, man, I, I could have I thrived in that culture. I could have been a part of that. Uh, and, and, and it would have appealed to me. Um, some of you are going to negatively react to the Spartans. You're going to be like, that, that culture, uh, it's in many ways despicable. I, I, don't, I wouldn't have wanted to be a part of that culture. Um, and it, there's really not a lot of in between with the Spartans. You are either going to be sort of on board with their constitution and want to be part of it, or you're going to be like, thank God uh, I don't have to live in that culture uh, right now. So, um, I'll be intrigued to get your, uh, your opinions on that, which brings us to what's, you know, technically due, uh, you know, this week. Um, uh, and I want to do it for Friday. So after class today, uh, and then throughout this week, all right, we're going to be looking at and focusing on CPA number five. All right. And CPA number five is going to deal with, uh, Sparta, uh, your Spartan reactions. All right. Um, to, the PowerPoint to a few video clips we're going to watch. Um, and those reactions on Sparta, CPA number five, uh, we're going to make that do. Uh, make sure you get it in uh, to the Canvas website before class time uh, this Friday. All right. Uh, so before 1115 uh, on Friday morning. All right. Uh, make sure you get that CPA number five in. 
uh, for uh, what should be, you know, as long as you're doing good effort on it and those types of things. And, some of you, and we're seeing that with, uh, you know, the, the assessment and scores that are coming back. Um, you know, those things are a reflection of your effort, of your uh, uh, reaction and want to uh, explore more about those things. Uh, so make sure you get that in uh, before Friday. Uh, CPA number five, we'll talk about that today. Cool. Awesome. Uh, so any questions, comments uh, for me uh, thus far? Um, I see many of us uh, are, uh, are here. I mean, again, your attendance at, uh, you know, these, um, these Zooms has been great. Uh, please keep it up. Um, I would like a little bit more interaction, uh, you know, on our chats, a little bit more people kind of, uh, you know, unmuting themselves here and there when we want to get into some things. So let's start off there today, right? We'll be, like I said, and we'll take, uh, we'll be here for 20, 25 minutes or so, and we'll look at uh, things that we want to do this week. Thoughts about what you wrote about in your forums, all right? Um, anybody want to throw something in in terms of modern connections, uh, modern religious connections, um, cool things they found? Did you find the commercial funny at all? Uh, you know, what are, uh, did you enjoy the video snips from the Odyssey? Uh, could you relate to Zeus or Hades at all? Uh, anybody care to throw in their comments? It would be a great place to start us off uh, for this week. So, I realized that while I was running my CPA, that each one had their own different stories, just like us as regular mortals. But the difference is we, they have powers we don't. That's what I found interesting. Connor, that's awesome. Thanks, dude. Um, that is uh, a, a great point to make, all right? Guys, one of the things that I would hope that you would pick up on uh, with the Greek gods is how much the Greeks liked to believe that their gods um, had all of the immorality and foibles and suspicions and jealousies and all the things that you all deal with and we all deal with as a part of daily life, especially as 18 and 22 year olds, you guys are dealing with, you know, uh, all kinds of emotions, right? The, the, the Greek gods had those emotions and those human frailties on display all the time. And I find that really interesting because, like I said, and I mentioned in the, in the notes, our gods or our god that we look at, whether you're, you know, Judeo, Christian, Islamic, whatever, um, our god doesn't have any of those qualities uh, or non-quality if you want to call them that all right great point uh bailey says videos were awesome those, those those movies are pretty cool I, I i totally agree um uh how the greeks look to the gods for answers to all their questions yeah so guys um the greeks truly honestly honest to a core the vast majority of greeks truly believed that nothing happened by chance in their world everything was a sign, some sort of sign from the gods, okay? And they interpret it as such. So uh, that would be, uh, again, one of those uh, hopefully truly interesting things that you bring up. Michael says anthropomorphic, absolutely. So good. So we're using our terms that we're getting used to. Uh, certainly they are in human form. Uh, one of the things, guys, that I want you to pick up with the Greeks, uh, and we'll get to this with the Romans as well when we start moving into the Romans, uh, next week, their gods tend to be the perfection of human form, all right? Their gods are chiseled, like not, you know, I mean, obviously they're chiseled out of, out of granite and, and stone and, and uh, marble, but like they're chiseled like they've been in the gym like their entire lives. Like they are, the Greek and the Roman gods, they're not missing arm day and leg day, okay? The, the, these guys and girls, the men and women that are portrayed by Greek and Roman gods, the gods and goddesses, are the perfection of the, of the uh, male and female forms, right? Um, which again, let's make a modern connection. That's a little bit different than uh, what we tend to associate uh, with, for instance, let's just say you're a Christian, 
okay? Um, and you believe that Jesus of Nazareth is the Savior of the world, and you believe in, 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 in Jesus the Messiah. Can you guys off the top of your head, like physically, could, could one of us, or, or like I said, throw it in the chat, unmute yourself. Could you guys like maybe physically describe how we in the modern world view Jesus physically? Like just think human physicality. How is Jesus interpreted? <clears throat> Rit six back. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with a no on that, Michael. I don't, I don't know if I've ever seen uh, a, a picture uh, of Jesus rocking a six pack. Um, now, uh, yeah, so I think that he may on some images be displayed like that because he's so skinny. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so we're looking at um, average size. Yeah, Bish says that average size, um, uh, regular kind of longish hair. Is he big and buff and huge and 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 the the quintessential display of human strength? No, absolutely not. All right. Yes, when we tend to, and Brooks makes a great point there, when we tend to think of, when we have Jesus in our head, he's, he's kind of disheveled. He's kind of scrawny. Yeah, great point, Ethan. He's kind of scrawny. He's not physically impressive. That is bizarre. And guys, when we get to Christianity with the Romans, one of the big things that the Romans are going to have a huge, I don't want to say issue, but one, one of the weird things that the Romans are going to view with the Christians is they're going to be like, what the heck are you guys doing? Like, like he's not impressive looking, you know, when the Christians talk about Jesus and they bring him up and we start to see the interactions between the Romans and the Christians, they're going to be like, no, like uh, th that's not what gods are supposed to look like. The physical impression of gods was very important to classical cultures, to the Greeks and the Romans, especially. They liked to view their gods as big, giant, hulking, beautiful, perf perfect beings all right but as we know you know morally uh how they interact they're anything but perfect good good that's great um yeah so like i said you know that they have superpowers uh you know i i really like i said i love that um the image of uh zeus and hades uh, fighting against their father Kronos and, and throwing lightning bolts and, and using all their powers and things like that. That to me um, uh, is interesting that we still conceptualize them that way. Great. Great work. Awesome. Thank you guys. I'll, I'll get into those this week uh, and we'll look at those um, forum reactions. Let me share my screen here for a minute, guys, uh, and we'll talk about uh, some things that we want to bring up uh, for this week, uh, and look into with, uh, the Spartans. So let's go here, uh, to our map, uh, and give me some, uh, give me some thumbs, uh, and, uh, some notifications when this pops up on your screen. Let me know. See it? Yes, no, maybe so. Popped up there yet? Yes, good. Thank you, Bish. Okay, good. Awesome. And chat, good. There you go. Okay, thanks, Cam. All right, good. Thank you, guys. Um, <clears throat> him and a allergies today. It's a bad allergy day. It's been so dry, no rain. All right. This is not, it's not a good time in human history to uh, be sneezing anywhere. Um, I might be, I might be ushered out uh, by the National Guard if I sneeze anywhere besides my household. Um, anyhow, uh, let's take a look at Sparta here on the map. All right, guys, Sparta, take a look at it. Located in, it is essentially the most southwesterly big city-state in this sort of Greece 
what, what's, what's generally sometimes called the, the archipelago. Now, that's a big word. You don't have to remember what that means, but it's sometimes called the Greek archipelago. And what that means is, is it, archipelago just, just means a giant collection of peninsulas and islands and those types of things. But it is the, it's the southwesternmost big player in the Greek city-state system. One, guys, look at all of the different types of, uh, not types, but look at all the different city-states. There's a lot of dots on this map, much more than we're used to, all right? The Greeks formed up the city-states. They acted, they uh, reacted. They were essentially little mini-nations, all right? <clears throat> also look at Sparta in the fact that it is, technically it looks like, and you can see it as kind of the most isolated of the city states, all right? Geographically, it's a little bit further away from most other city states, okay? Um, and that's not by chance and that's not by coincidence. The Spartans will want to and will seek isolation their entire existence, especially when they are at their most powerful, okay? So let me skip ahead and let's talk today about some terms, all right? Big this week, guys, uh, one of the big things this week is terms, all right? There's going to be a lot of terms that we're going to be looking at, all right? And you got to get a handle on the different types of terms and the different uh, words that we're going to be using if you want to be successful uh, when we come to the end of the Greek stuff next week and we start getting into uh, quiz two type, uh, type stuff. The Greeks... Uh, the Greek city-states were essentially, guys, the best way to think about them is they were experiments. The Greeks loved to experiment with governments. They loved to try different things out that um, they uh, felt were going to be community-type um, uh, governmental uh, programs. All right. Now, what I mean by that is this, and we'll start clicking on some of these, some of these features and, and, and we'll look at it this way. Guys, for the early part of Greek history, all right, the, the, the most dominant form of government, as it was throughout all of human history up to this point, and guys, if you're looking at, um, you know, the most dominant form of human government throughout the entirety of human history, the most common dominant form of government for human beings has been monarchy, has been kings, has been one guy in charge or one woman in charge if she be a queen, and that's it and that's the list. That is the most common and dominant form of human government that has existed throughout the 5,000 some odd plus years of civilization, okay? The problem is the Greeks, um, by around, guys, by around the year 800 or so BC, um, the, the Greeks were kind of over the king thing, all right? They wanted to experiment in alternatives to what the Greeks felt was tyranny. That's another big word that we want to talk about this week and that I, I need you guys to get uh, into. So what the Greeks began to do is they began to experiment their governments within their city-states with different forms of alternatives to just one dude calling the shots. Okay, so guys, try to get that in your notes and try to get that in your minds, is the Greeks did not like one guy calling the shots. They didn't like it. It was not a form of government that they wanted. When we get to the Romans, the Romans are going to be very similar with this. The Romans are going to have a big problem. Well, I should say the Republican Romans, the Romans before we get to the emperors. The Romans are not going to want one guy calling the shots either. We guys, if you want to make some modern connections, we're very tuned into this type of belief. We don't like when there's just one person in charge and we bristle and we get really angry. Even guys, I mean, come on, let's, 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 let's just, you know, uh, talk about, you know, the, the, the pink, uh, or should I say orange elephant in the middle of the room here, you know, everybody, um, always, you know, everybody's like going scary about the scary mean orange man, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the White House and he's mean and he's a dictator and that's one side's opinion of the scary orange man. All right. And so one of the things is, is we, but even guys, even if you're on, um, no matter which political side you're on, right or left in modern America, we don't like when one person calls the shots. We like to have lots of voices involved uh, to make decisions. 
So what the Greeks began to do is they wanted more voices involved, but they went slowly about it. Okay, they went slowly with how they were going to do it. So what they did was they started with small groups involved at first. Guys, this is a type of government called an oligarchy. Okay, um, oligarchies are kind of semi-dictatorships of small groups of very rich aristocratic elite men making decisions okay so for instance all right th there is an element uh, a lot of people if you want to make some modern connections to uh, american government there are some people there are a lot of people who believe that while we do have a president and we do have a Congress and we have a Senate, that in reality, we're actually being run or guided by three, four, five really rich elite guys. And they're kind of using their monetary influence to call the shots in the American governmental system. You guys can probably start thinking about some of these individuals that sometimes get blamed or sometimes get um, uh, picked out for being those who are in, you know, the really ones in charge. Obviously you got Jeff Bezos in charge of Amazon. You got Bill Gates, Microsoft for a while with Steve Jobs, with Apple, um, you know, on the uh, another level, you have very rich individuals, Warren Buffett, George Soros, those types of individuals that people claim are running the American government as an oligarchic kind of behind the scenes thing. Um, but we not, I don't want to get too off topic with that. Problem is guys, oligarchies, small groups of guys in charge, what's what's, what always tends to happen is one guy wants all the power in a group, let's just say of three people. The Romans will try this too. The Romans will try in little groups of little groups of dudes in charge. And one dude always wants all the power. It's the way it goes. We all know this. We've all read Lord of the Flies, hopefully. All right. Um, one guy always wants the conch. Okay. I have the conch and I'm going to be the only one that's going to be allowed to talk. Hopefully you guys know what the hell I'm talking about. Lord of the flies. And poor little piggy dies. And say, I never got over that. I'm still not over that. Um, but anyway, uh, oligarchies will always generally tend to devolve into one dude will grab all the power and turn it back into a, a dictatorship of monarchy. The Greeks tried to prevent this. Right? The Greeks tried to prevent this, and how they tried to prevent it, ladies and gents, is by essentially saying everybody's involved. We're all going to make decisions, meaning every citizen of the city-state. Now, guys, remember, this isn't everybody. It's every citizen of the city-state. So are women involved in these democratic decisions? No, they're not, okay? Uh, so again, you're chopping off half the population right there. Women were not allowed to, uh, in, in almost the entirety of the Greek dem democratic situation, to have some instances of women participating in government. But the vast majority, ladies and gents, was male. You had to be, and maybe these are some, some, some uh, things, that some, some bells that are, are ringing again in your head. You probably had these in history classes. You had to be a male. What else did you have to, to, to have to be a citizen? Do you guys remember that at all? You can unmute yourself. You can throw it into the chat if you want. In order to vote, in order to be a part of the democracy, you had to be a man. You had to have, uh, let's see here, people throwing it in. Good. Good. You had to own land. Excellent. You had to, uh, Nicholas, great. Well, you had to be a property owner. All right. You had to have a stake in society. All right. But guys, the point is that they were involving in some cases and in some bigger city states, thousands of voices, which is much different and much, which is just, it's totally bizarre for human history up to this point to involve this many people in decision-making processes. But the Greeks, guys, our word democracy, and the, which comes from the Greek word, which is called demokratia, okay? The Greek word demokratia is much different understanding than what we understand with democracy. Let me explain. All right. In the Greek system, demokratia, it's direct. Every citizen votes on every issue. 
Think about that for a minute. All right. Imagine if you, if us as citizens of the United States, if we had to vote on every single thing that went through government. Can some of you maybe, like I said, unmute yourself or throw it in the chat. What is seen as the problem with having all citizens vote on every single thing that comes up? Because some of us start to think about why that would in some cases be problematic. Mm -hmm. Great, Ethan, that's a great one. And see, our founders, our government founders, whatever you think about our government founders, you can think that they're the worst people in the world and that they stink and that, you know, but it's ignoring some context. But I don't care what you think about our government founders personally. The point is, is that they were geniuses when it came to government. Uh, they were political geniuses, and right? you may hate them for other reasons, but you're ignoring the context, but they're governmental geniuses, okay? So what you're saying here, Nicholas Stoddard's in there, we couldn't even get half the population to vote in election election on everything. Good, right? And best, great point. It can even be more divisive. So guys, in a true democracy, in true Greek democratia, if 51 people want to do this, if 51% of the people want to do this, and 49 want to do this, who wins? The 51 win and the 49 lose. And, the, and that's a big portion of the population that's kind of ticked off. So it can be, yes, exactly, but it can be very divisive. All right. And Nicholas, that's a, that, that's a great point to make. And Ethan makes a great point. Guys, it's impossible. And our founders who founded our government realize this. It's impossible. People have lives. They have children, they have jobs, they have farms that they have to produce food on. So you can't have everybody voting all the time on every issue. It's impossible. Okay. And the Greeks will come to realize this, but they'll realize it a little bit too late and they won't make changes on it. So what we have created, all right, in the modern world is we've created essentially what's known as a republic, a representative democracy, where we elect people from time to time to go vote for us, to go speak for us. That's a solution. That's a way that we've figured it out in the modern world. It's a solution to the problem of having everybody vote on everything. <clears throat> Sparta, guys, is the place that we're heading this week. And I find Sparta endlessly intriguing because what the Spartans do, and this is where you can start to pick up on this, guys, on page 192. Guys, what the Spartans do is they're like, we're going to take a little bit of all the things that we've done as Greeks in government, and we're going to smush it into one place. The Spartans are going to have kings. The Spartans are going to have a group of elites, a small group of elites. And the Spartans are also going to let their Spartan citizens vote on issues from time to time, depending on what that issue is. That's why, guys, I find the Spartans endlessly intriguing because they bring up everything. They're, they have kings, they have small groups, and they got everybody voting on certain issues. Really, truly interesting uh, place to look at. All right. And so that's what we're going to get into this weekend. I'm going to get your, your, your thoughts. I'll stop sharing the screen here for a minute and we can talk and finish it out for today. Um, <sighs> Modern images of Spartans, all right? Let me type that into the chat. Can anybody think of any sort of modern uh, interpretations of, uh, of the Spartans off the top of your head? You know, there's modern interpretations of Spartans going out there. What, what do we tend to think of off the top of your head? 300, Ethan's a great one. 300, uh, buff dudes and diapers. Okay. All right, and, and, and then it's a good point to make. I'm not sure that they would consider them diapers, um, but uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm glad that you guys are picking up, though, um, spears and shields and, and, and physicality, all right? Ethan, good man. He seemed to, you've gotten into this a little bit. They're, they're, yes, the Spartans, ladies and gents, are going to be the smallest numerical city-state, but they're going to be the strongest in terms of army, power, and physicality. How? 
How are they able to do that? Okay. Um, there is one way that the Spartans are able to do that, guys, and you're gonna, we're going to get into it this week. The Spartans, guys, they sacrificed their entire society and their entire lives for military success. Bottom line. All right. When we get into the Spartans, guys, all the great Greek thinkers and writers and playwrights and mathematicians, so your Socrates, your Plato, your, you know, uh, if, if you want to get into mathematics, all right, um, Euripides, all of these great Greek minds, all right, that, that, that tend to come up with all the ideas, they don't come from Sparta. No. What we get out of Sparta are generals. We remember, uh, you know, we remember the the Spartan generals, of course, obviously the most famous from, you know, the battle of, you know, with, with the Persians and the, and the 300s, everybody, does anyone off the top of their head know that, that most famous of Spartan generals? Anybody know his name? Excellent, Leonidas, All right? Great. And Leonidas, guys, and we'll talk about him uh, th this week, and we'll watch a video a little bit about Leonidas, was not just a general, but he was also a king, and right? he was also one of the kings of Sparta, right? Um, so guys, even, but even remember this, and one of the last points that I make, even though the Spartans will have kings, they won't just have one king. The Spartans, guys, they'll have two kings, two, two kings, because why? Because even when the Spartans get down to having a monarchy, they don't want two or excuse me, they want two. They don't just want one guy in charge. They have to have two, all right? So as we get into uh, this week and we look at the Spartan system, how weird and peculiar and isolated and violent and all these words that you guys are going to come up with and pick uh, up on uh, with the Spartans, I'm going to be really intrigued to see what you think about it, all right? Um, so uh, I will finish out. Okay, so what's, what, do you, what do you guys expect this week? I'll finish out that PowerPoint that we just got into and, and looked at. I'll finish that out uh, in a uh, video uh, form uh, for you uh, to look at this week. Uh, you can expect uh, a couple videos uh, to watch, you know, video cuts here and there, uh, a documentary on the Spartans that we want to watch. It's one of my favorite videos um, out there, all right? And... I want to get your reactions. I want to get your thoughts on the Spartans. You like, you dislike, why, those types of things. And I want to bring it in here on Friday, and I want to discuss it. All right, because the Spartans tend to make people emote. They tend to make people uh, really react in interesting ways. All right? Awesome. So, guys, that's what's happening this week. All right? Any comments from me, questions? Uh, anything at all from, from, from you all? <clears throat> no? Okay. All right, cool. Looks like uh, the professor has explained it because uh, I'm kind of awesome. All right. Um, but again, guys, Sparta. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Kenzie. The, the clap plus 500 points for your, for your clap emoji. Uh, thank you again. All right. Um, I kid. I kid. Uh, so, guys, again, hey, Brady with a, uh, some sort of party emoji. I like that a lot. I'm going to start using that one in my meetings. I'm going to throw, uh, throw a party. Hey, thumbs up. Thank you, Maddie. Thumbs up. Great, guys. like it. I like to see it. I like to see it. Um, all right, friends. Uh, so, again, Sparta Week. What do you think? You like, you dislike, pick up on the terms, the W's, the wins, the where's. Those uh, are all great. Uh, things that we want to pick up for this week. All right. Um, uh, notes. I, uh, oh, so yeah, it can, before we leave the notes that we screen shared today, you guys can pick back up on those when you review this video, but those notes are going to be part of the downloadable uh, PowerPoint notes for this week. Okay. Uh, as I put out there uh, all the time, uh, those uh, links are downloadable. Uh, and uh, for your convenience. Yeah, no worries, guys. Awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, 11.55. Great. That's enough for today. Uh, you'll get your link uh, later in the week, and I will see you back in here, my friends, Friday at 11.15. Cool? All right. Until then, my friends, uh, I bid you uh, adieu.